to say a few more words about your question about patriarchy. Yes. Um, uh, because I thought that was a really interesting question, and there's some interesting complexities associated with that. And so what I what I started with is that um, you, you know you have to break it down into analytically into precisely what causal process you're invoking. And usually when people invoke it, it's like this um, mysterious uh, causal force in the ether that somehow comes down and infects people's minds. Um, and they don't get into the question of, well, um, what are the causal origins of what you're calling patriarchy? You know, uh, and, uh, and, and to get to that, you have to get to things like female mate preferences and the co-evolution of those mate preferences with male mating strategies, you know, and, and, and the part of male mating strategies is to prioritize resource acquisition and clawing their way up the status hierarchy and, you know, uh, selling their grandmother to, to, to get ahead. Uh, and, and studies of this gets to another sex difference that women tend to allocate their time, energy and investment across a wider array of uh, you know, what we call adaptive problems. So, you know, they, women more than men invest in kin. Uh, it, even if they're married, they invest more in their in-laws, uh, in their friendships, uh, et cetera. And men on average tend to be more monomaniacal about getting ahead. So, so you could yeah. say you could say the most effective long-term strategy for smashing the patriarchy is for women to select low-ranking mates to sleep with. <laughs> uh, yes. So if you, if you <laughs> I should if, get in lots they, of trouble for that. <laughs> well, well, if women change their mate preferences so that they didn't care about status and resources and uh, those or those qualities, it, and you iterated that over enough generations, yeah, it would it would ultimately change male behavior. 